So can what is 35 minus 2y? Can that be simplified at all? No, because they're not like terms. So we just get 3x equals 35 minus 2y. And then once again, we divide by 3. So like I said, those mirror each other a little bit. The only difference is that now it has that y variable. So that those aren't like terms. So I felt that we were pretty comfortable for the most part with these two. You know, looking at that order of how we how we go about solving for x. Do we agree? We're a little com comfortable with that, the order of those. Caroline, what do you think? Mm -hmm. For number one and two, do you feel comfortable with the order we took of multiplying by five, subtracting two, dividing by three on those first two problems? Yes. Yes? So the reason I'm asking that, so I feel like those two we did pretty well on, on that order. But I think what was causing us some problems was three and four. So I want to talk about those a little more in depth. Because I think this is where we started to run into some issues. So what did we think, what did we think altogether was our, should be our first step here? Four and five by three. Five by three? Um, so I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone said multiply both sides by 3. I think that's what most people did. Was there, but we ran into some problems with, you know, we would multiply just the 4x divided by 3 by 3, but not that minus 5. We weren't distributing that out. Is there potentially maybe an easier route we could take to solve this problem? Maybe another first step we could take. Yeah. Adding five on both sides. So we can start by adding five on both sides. So if we add five on both sides, that gets us four x divided by three equals sixteen, and then we can multiply that three. So. You might not think it made it easier, but some people might. So it's there are multiple routes to solve this problem, but I think that you know doing it this way, you know for sure that when you multiply both sides by three, you're not going to run into that distribution problem. But if you feel comfortable with that, it's a valid way to solve it. But a lot of times, how we think about it is, what is the last thing? The last thing being done to x is the first thing we want to undo. So here, what was the first thing being done to x? Multiply by, by 4. Then what happened next? And this is kind of similar to what we talked about in 4.1 and 4.2. 5 by 3, and then the last thing was subtracting by 5. So the first thing we could do is add 5. And the similar, you know, it's the exact same for number 4. The first thing we could do was add 5y and then solve from there. I'm not saying that you have to do it this way. If you multiply by 3 and do it correctly, you'll get the right answer. This way it just could be potentially easier if you feel that way. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make sure, we're going to look back at 3 and 4 you know, in our groups just to make sure that we did those correctly and then work through 5 through 8, I'm pretty sure. And so hopefully we'll get through those today. And if we do, we'll continue to do some other things. But let's, in our groups, let's continue to work on these and think about, because this what we just talked about, this best order, that's going to come up in 5 through 8. The problems do get harder. And we do want to look at the best order to do them. And so I want to talk to you all about it in your groups, because I don't really want to stand up here and lecture to you all anymore. But in our groups, we'll work through 5 through 8 and try to determine kind of the best order to solve those problems in. 5 through 8? Yeah. Once we've, once we've done, make sure we've done 3 and 4 correctly in our groups. Are there any questions on that? Okay, so go ahead and start working in your groups on these problems. Hopefully we'll get through eight today and we'll continue to, to solve these. Mr. Local Mag, are you in the bathroom?
could distribute it. Um, but this is, you know, and this is something that we harmonize. We think maybe that's just the, the best first step. That's not right. I'm not sure. So, okay, so do you particularly want to have fractions in the problem? No, right? Do we know if, what's, do you know what 2 out of 5 times 3 is? No. So it's going to be, it's not going to be a nice whole number. So what do you think is going to be an alternate first step we could take to avoid that? What is the inverse of dividing by 5? Mm -hmm. And multiplying by 5, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now what's the inverse of multiplying by 2? Yeah. You said the inverse of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. Uh, something and what's the inverse of multiplying by 2? No. So the inverse of multiplying to divided by two. So now we have this fraction of five times. What do you think will happen if we multiply both sides of the equation five times? What do you think will happen? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can do it that way too. So then, well, if you did it multiplied on this side, we'll substitute the six. 